Hello and welcome to Mummy Knit, the podcast where we chat all things parenthood. I'm Harriet Shearsmith and I am indeed mumming it in my way with my three kids, but I want to know what that looks like for other parents. If you like the podcast, don't forget to check out my book, also called Mummy Knit, available in all good bookshops and online. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Mummy Knit. Today I am chatting to someone who I've followed on social media for an awfully long time. I'm sure that most of you will know her. It is none other than Louise Boyce from Mama Still Got It. Hi Louise, how are you? I'm fine, hello. Thank you for having me on. Oh no, thank you for coming on. You know, there's loads that I wanted to chat to you about. And yeah, we've both got three kids. We've both gone down that route. (laughs) Oh God, yeah. (laughs) So yeah, I just wanted to have a general chit chat about motherhood and there's so many things that you've done. But before we jump into that, can you tell everybody who you are for those that might not know? Hello, everyone. My name's Louise Boyce. I am a mother of three. They are nine, six and two. I've been a model for over 25 years. That's where my journey started, I guess. And then started a blog and Instagram page called Mama Still Got It after I was told when I was pregnant with my first at 31 that my career was over because I was pregnant and I was considered damaged goods and I was just like no I don't think so so I started Mama Still Got It to remind myself and you and many others that just because you do become a mother doesn't mean that we have lost our identity we can and do still want to look good feel good and flourish and you know I believe that we get better with age so that was the whole ethos behind it and I guess on my journey as well I did a campaign about pregnant bumps being used on models which I think and hope helped lots of women feel better about themselves. I think it really did and I said to you just before we started that that was something I really wanted to discuss with you because when you are pregnant or when you're wanting to become pregnant that's the first time you start to actually look at other bumps and think oh that's a nice neat bump and I remember (laughs) my ankles were swollen I had hippo feet I had you know swelling all around my arms honestly in the first pregnancy I blew up like a balloon and I would (laughs) love look at these models and think well why does everything look the same and really Mm. neat apart Mm. from this bump it doesn't make any sense am I doing Mm. something wrong is there something wrong Mm. with me it sounds like a silly thing to say when you are in that phase and you know everybody tells you be really grateful that you're pregnant and be really happy that you're getting to experience this but psychologically I still think you compare yourself to other women and I think we are conditioned to do so and you really do look at other bumps so I definitely think your campaign helped so many people and it did make changes didn't it yeah I mean what was interesting to me was obviously being a model in the industry I knew that a lot of brands not all of them but the majority of them do use these foam bumps on models to advertise maternity wear so I knew that so I always knew that when I got pregnant as a model I would be out of work I would never do any maternity modeling and it was just normal to me I didn't even really question it before and it wasn't until I put something up on my Instagram when I was 17 weeks pregnant with my third so I had a little bump and I said well that's it I'm officially on maternity leave did you know that brands use phone bumps on models rather than using pregnancy models and the response I got from it was really quite overwhelming so many women were thankful for that information because they were like that's why I don't look like that they're not actually pregnant they're not going through all the other things you go through when you're pregnant the swelling the bloating the you know not particularly feeling that great in your body sometimes and you look at these models and they look absolutely perfect and that's because they're not growing a baby inside them some women were angry that they didn't know this before some women actually messaged me saying that they had gone through like a a depression or and really like self-loathing because they weren't looking like these women online and some people were like this doesn't make any sense why would you bother doing that and I know so many pregnant models not so much now but back then that were out of work because they were pregnant and they could have done the job. They could have done the job. I know one model who shot loads of maternity clothes with a foam bump. She then got pregnant and she lost her job. So it's so, so ironic. So then I 
I thought, well, you know, I'm going to try and do something about this. So I started a campaign called Push It Out, which wanted brands to just be a bit more transparent with their advertising, with their maternity advertising. If you're using a phone bump, great, but just state it. So you know when you're online shopping and you see this model is five foot ten and she's wearing a size eight or this model is so and so. And so they always have the height and the size of the model, which is really helpful. But now it also says she is wearing a phone bump. This model is not pregnant. So it just helps the consumer to one go, okay, well, I don't know if I'm going to look like that then. Yeah. Because all the bumps are very neat, aren't they? They're very neat. And I was enormous. <laughs> and I would buy these dresses and they'd look nothing. It'd look completely different on me. So now that there is a disclaimer that says this model is not actually pregnant, I'm hoping that it makes one a pregnant woman feel better about herself if she is having, you know, those thoughts of, I don't like the skin that I'm in at the moment because your body does change when you're pregnant. Some people embrace it. Some people have a really hard time with it. So there is now this disclaimer and I'm really pleased that there is. I kind of, you know, I'm glad that it has helped women realize that, you know, their bump is perfect just because it doesn't look like the person online who isn't actually pregnant. Yeah. Their bump is perfect and every bump is different. Even my three bumps with my three pregnancies were different. They're all different and they're all so beautiful and unique and everyone should know that. They should, yeah. And I mean, it's funny that you say all three were different because, and like I said, I blew up with Reuben, my first. I just swelled everywhere. Mm. And funny enough, after I had him, that went down really quickly. And then with my second child, I was quite neat and compact. Mm. And I had this perfect, pretty little bump. And it doesn't matter whether it's your first, second, third, 30th pregnancy, <laughs> every single bump is different. And what you see mm. online, especially when you're using a foam bump that's probably been cut to a exactly mm. the same mold and all the rest of it it's just not real and that's no. that's the idea isn't it you know you and I both do advertising online as well through mm. our social medias so we mm. both know how important it is that we disclose that and we both disclose it why are Absolutely. brands are not expected to be held to the same standard where they're letting the consumer know what they're looking at and that's totally it- and I did an experiment I actually bought clothes from a certain brand maternity clothes from this model wearing a teeny tiny foam bump I bought the same dress and I photographed myself in exactly the same pose next to this model. And you could see the difference in how the dress hung around my bump, around everywhere. And you could see the difference. And there was one maternity swimsuit that I did the same thing. And the model, I mean, she didn't even look pregnant. She looked like how I look after I have a curry. You know what I mean? It was just like, it's not showing like the diversity of women that are pregnant. Yes. You know, we're not all size eight with a small bump. We're not. No. We're all different sizes. Now, I'm a size 14, 16. And that with a bump, I think I went up to like a size 16, 18 with this enormous bump. And I felt like I wasn't looking at images of what I wanted to see online when I was pregnant. Yeah. I was seeing a size eight. He was like 18 yeah. with this foam bump. And I just thought something needs to change here. Something's not right here. Especially if it's making pregnant women question themselves doubt themselves when they're going through the most miraculous, incredible experience. You know, it makes me feel so sad that they are questioning their bump. And now that they know that actually what they were looking at wasn't real, the messages that I got were were beautiful saying, thank you, because you've just made me feel so much better in myself. That's so so good to hear, isn't it? That it actually made a difference. And funnily enough, after I became aware of your campaign, I'd started to notice like people that I'd maybe seen off reality TV who Mm. were also more models like a Love Island star or something I'd be like yeah she's got pregnant pretty quick and then (laughs) suddenly started thinking hang on a minute that's Mm. not adding up and that's the way you start to realize and it does make you feel better about yourself talk to me about being pregnant because I think this is a huge thing across a range of industries where Mm. women like you say you were told at 31 first pregnancy not interested in you anymore thanks Mm. very much for coming but you're done now and I think that's a really common thing across a broad spectrum of industries but not so many seem to get away with it quite as blatantly as in modeling where it's we could use you but we're going to use the 18 year old with a foam bump so mm. are there any regulations or anything around that what is going on there I mean a lot of a lot of brands a lot of clients say well we don't want to use a pregnant model because we're worried that they might get tired on set because you are on your feet all day mm-hmm. it is a tiring job however I've worked 
with very, very heavily pregnant photographers, makeup artists, stylists who were in the studio every day. They're also on their feet every day and they don't get replaced by women that aren't pregnant. They work to the very, very, very end, which is great. I mean, they're freelance, you know, they have to work, but they do say that they do have this excuse or that's why we don't use pregnant models because we know we're worried about, you know, them being tired. I'm sorry, it's such bullshit. Sorry, I don't know if I can swear on this, but I you just can. did. Great. <laughs> but, I, you know, I have seen a change now. There are more pregnant models out there and there are more pregnant models modeling and showing different sizes. You know, I love the fact that you can now see like a size 14 or 16 or 18 model with a bump. And I do love that. And, you know, there have been some brands that always did use pregnant models, like Mother Care was one of them. And unfortunately, they're not around anymore in the mm. UK, but they were always striving. They were like, well, you're selling maternity clothes. Why would you not use a pregnant woman? It doesn't yeah. make any sense. And it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And also when you're shooting, when you shoot maternity, you've got a bump. So you're pretty much in your second trimester. That's when you feel your best. Yeah. Well, I did. That's when you feel and look your best and you're like, and you've got the energy back and you're like, I want to work. I can work. Let me do it. And I never got that opportunity. And looking back as well, and I do thank social media for this. When I was told when I was 31 that I was done, like literally, well, you're done. You're, you're 30, you're pregnant. Honestly, my previous agency, well, well, you're done. And I, I just accepted it. I was just like, oh, okay, God, what the hell am I going to do then with my life? Because I've been doing this at that point. I've been doing it for 15 years and I didn't really know anything else. And it was a really scary part. You know, I was like, I'm about to have a baby. I have no idea what I'm going to do. But I do think with the rise of social media and me kind of being on there and being like, well, bollocks to this. I'm still very, very capable of doing my job. Just because I'm a mother does not mean that I'm damaged goods, but there is such a stigma around becoming a mother in the workplace that you're suddenly like, well, jog on. And that's something that obviously we're still working on that, aren't we? Just We are it's, very much. And across that's, everything, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Across every yeah. spectrum. And it's interesting that you say damaged goods was the, the phrasing that was used because as a woman, you are almost treated as goods. Mm. And again, across a broad spectrum of industries, you are treated as if you mm. are goods, as if you are the mm. sum of what you are doing. And that's it. Nothing can change. Mm. You fit into that nice, neat little box. And especially, you know, as you're getting older and as you, you know, become a mother, you're treated as if, well, you've chosen that now, you know, you mm. not really going to be able to do anything else and yet we don't see the same thing for fathers you would never hear no, a father being no. told well you've got a kid now thanks for coming I know I said to my husband I was like have you ever been asked how you juggle parenting and work and he was like <laughs> Like looked at me like I had three heads. He was like, no. And I was like, exactly. That's my point. Why do we get asked, you know, how do you balance it all? And we have to have an answer and we have to have it all figured out. And yet fathers don't get that same question. Mm -hmm. I mean, it all seems very dated, doesn't it? You know, yes, that's what happened back in the 1950s. It was very much like the man went out to work, the woman mm -hmm. stayed at home. It's different now. Yeah. It's different. And I feel like we all need to keep up with that. We um, do. I've been guilty of saying it. I will say it sometimes, you know, how do you balance everything? And then when I think about it, I think, well, I don't ask any men the same question. No. And I think it's because there is so much more expectation, especially with parenthood, on a woman mm. that she'll be the caregiver. She'll be mm. the one that does, you know, the cooking, bit of stuff mm. around the house. He might help with the dishes. And he's not helping with the dishes. He's bloody doing the dishes because that's mm. just as much his role as it is hers. And there is still this expectation. And it does come partly from the workplace where you are, once you've had a child, no longer considered as useful or as committed that women will be the one that will be at home when the baby's born, when the baby's here. They'll be the one that'll stay at home. They'll maybe give up their career for a bit, might dip back into it, but that's pretty much it, game over. And yeah. it sucks. It does suck. And it's weird. I, I felt that with a few friends as well. When I announced I was pregnant, there were some friends that had no interest in having children or weren't there yet. Mm -hmm. And I even felt that they kind of dropped off. Oh, they good. weren't interested yes. in me or my life. They didn't even come and see my baby for months and that, and it really hurt me I was like I'm still the same person if actually I'm a better person now because look what I've created look what I've become and it wasn't until these friends became mothers then they were like hiya yeah go for a coffee and I'm like okay so now you get it and I don't hold it against them I probably did the same thing to friends that were pregnant before me without realizing it because there is a part of you that's like well you can't come out drinking now and you can't yeah. stay out late 
so I, you know, I probably did it without realizing it. And if there's anyone listening who I did do it to, I apologize completely because now I know where you are. But again, the men don't get that. They don't get that. They don't. They're they still there, go wet the baby's head on the night. Oh, do you know what? That mm. whole wetting the baby's head thing. <laughs> Does it make I you just stabby? Because it, it yes. makes me a bit stabby. I was just, Ma- sat there yeah, and I was massively, like, you want to massively. do what? Yeah. I was like, because you've had such a hard time with this yeah. pregnancy. Just you had one night of joy and then you have to sit around for nine months and then, oh, look, the baby's here. And then you can going i mean and they're drinking anyway like they're going out within the nine months and having fuck you know don't get me started on that <laughs> i want to get you started i can just see it there you see ah! upon something like, right we're gonna rant about this for the next yeah. 10 minutes at least it doesn't matter what stage it is. And don't get me wrong, when I had Reuben, I had a really bad time. I had sepsis afterwards. So Adam very much. Oh my that. gosh. It was awful. And he very Whoa. much had that panic of, she kind of asked for this and now I'm going to be on my own with it. Shit. And I don't really know what to do. And that was a real panic for him. So it's not that mm. there's no kind of involvement, but even there, there was no recognition for him at mm. all. It was kind of like, oh, has your mum helped you with, with the baby whilst Harriet's been in hospital? And he was like, no. And I think that's when we first started to notice, like really, really notice. And it was almost presumed that he would be utterly useless and completely <laughs> incompetent. And I would do everything and get on with it. And that's not the case at all. But the wetting of the baby's head may be a bit of a contentious subject for a few. <laughs> I think something that also drives me mad is when I say to, and it's not just my husband, I know other people do this, when that when you, I say, oh, I've, I've got to go to work um, and I won't be back till after they've gone to bed. And he's like, so I'm babysitting. I'm like, no, you're parenting. No. Like, do you want me to pay you? Then you are like, I'm like come on. <laughs> No, that drives me bonkers. Babysitting. Baby. No, it's so oh, dad's got they, the- they're your children. They they're yours. Exactly. Your, your parenting. They belong yeah. to you too. Like you are responsible for them. I'd said to the kids the other day, I was going down to London. I was like, Mummy's going down to London. I'm not gonna be back until after you're in bed, but I'll come and give you a kiss goodnight whilst you're sleeping. And I don't and I'm too frightened to wave them up. <laughs> I'm the dog like, that's it, little wave gone. But I'd said to them, I'm going to do this. And, and Toby, my middle child, had looked at me and gone, is daddy giving us dinner or are you leaving food? And I said to him, daddy will do dinner. He went, pasta then. <laughs> I was like, dude, that is savage. Just because your dad didn't cook very well. And Adam was absolutely, he was like, hey. Hey, I'm going to go that get chicken hilarious. and chips. And Toby went, oh. no, no word of a lie. He went, so you're taking us down to Morrison's then to get the ready meals? That's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> cooking is not his forte. He can clean really well, but cooking is not Adam's forte. And I was speaking to a friend about it and she said, you know what? When I was younger, I remember being mortified if my mum would say, I'm going to go away for anything. And then mm. my dad would be like, shock everybody. He'd be able to do hair. He'd be able to cook. And he was perfectly capable. And I yep. asked him once, why don't you do this when mum's here and his answer was because mum's here and that just exactly. stuck with me because I was but that like, is exactly mm-hmm. right yeah but they are completely capable of everything it's just that we're here or maybe they think that we do it better but they are capable and I find myself doing it when my mother-in-law comes over and she is so helpful she's literally like the fairy godmother she just comes in and goes and everything's like she's amazing and I'm so grateful for her and when she's at our house I find that I'm the one that's like well you can do that I'm just gonna sit back and And I'm like this is how my husband feels with me all day every day so I do get it but also I think that my mother-in-law likes to just be in control sometimes so I just let her get on with it my mother-in-law is very much the same and you know maybe our husbands do think we do it better because I'm pretty confident my mother-in-law comes in and does it better so I'm just like you know what dude you just exactly just crack on and help me that's great. Um, yeah. The laundry smells better because you've washed exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. It's nice. So exactly maybe they're onto something maybe but I do the same with a few things around the house I never empty the bins ever no ever I'll pile up rubbish on top of rubbish on top yes. of rubbish and just wait for him to do it and he does do it and he does do a fine job although he will go to the tip and he'll be a good hour and a half he makes it like a little event for himself he kind of goes via Mackie D's or via something and it's he actually calls it the tip holiday and I'm like fine off you go to your tip holiday. you do you it's fine and you say our tip 
is, is literally walking distance. I mean, we obviously you get in the car because you pile up the car, but there is no yeah. McDonald's. We're in a small town. There's <laughs> nothing nearby, so there is no joy in that town run. But I will do the same. I will actively pile up the bin. And it's almost like I will look at the bin sometimes and be like, I'm not doing that. No, purely I'm based on the that. fact that I do all the cooking and I'm mm-hmm. doing all of that. I will not mm-hmm. do that bin. I refuse. And then it'll get to the point where the kids are tipping their cereal on and no one can shut it. And I'm like, mm. Adam, could you, could, could you? So yep. we all do the same thing. Do your kids do that with piling cereal on top of things as well and then trying to shut it? So it's just some <laughs> sticky group. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course. What I've realized doing some of my silly videos that I sometimes think, well, is anyone going to relate to this? Is this just me? Then you realize in the comments, like, I do this too. I'm, or Mikey does that too. And you're like, oh, thank God, I'm not alone. And everyone's like, oh, thank God, I'm not alone because everyone does the same thing. And we do think that we're alone. And oh, God, I'm such a terrible mother because I've done this and I've done that. But actually, we all do it. We do. And that, that leads me really nicely into your <laughs> videos and things. Talk to me about how you got started doing that. Because I am very much the person that will be like, I don't like it. It's new. I'm not doing it. And then after maybe six months, I'll be like, no, I really like it. I want to join in. And I'm really late to the party. <laughs> I very much hang back and be like, nee, not keen. And then realize that actually, no, I really love it. I've kind of yeah. really started to dabble with TikTok. And I'm like, Hoo! It's fun. Um, oh, I love prior TikTok. Prior to that, I was like, no, I'm far too old. I'm not getting in- oh. I'm not getting involved. So I love that so many, and I think this happened through lockdown. So many people were like, do you know what, sod it, we've got nothing else to do, and mm. got involved. So how did you get involved? Because you were involved before lockdown. Well, it actually started in March 2020 when lockdown first happened. So my job as a model completely and utterly stopped, like lots of others did. There was nothing for me to do. I was feeling really anxious about COVID-19 and I needed to laugh. I just kind of stopped looking at BBC updates on my phone and instead I downloaded TikTok and I started scrolling through TikTok and I realized that I was laughing a lot, especially before I was going to bed. Instead of scrolling through the news and the number of COVID cases, I was actually scrolling through TikToks and laughing. And I thought, well, this is nice. I like this. And then I also saw some amazing creativity, like people using certain clips of a film and kind of Mm. merging it into something that was in real life. And I found it really funny. For some reason, it just appealed to me. And then one day I I decided to make my own video and I just put it on TikTok and people liked it. And then I thought, well, I put it on Instagram because I guess before my content on Instagram had been very much like the model life, you know, behind the scenes. This is my latest picture. And it was, you know, it was, you know, it was nice. I wasn't really known on Instagram to be this funny mum who's you know struggles with three kids and so I thought I'll put it out there and I'll see what happens and the response was good so I thought well I'll do more and I'll do more and and then I had messages from people saying thank you for making me laugh like today I didn't I haven't laughed today and I've been really anxious about everything and your videos have given me joy or that I can relate to them or thank you I thought I was the only person that did that And then when we had the second round of homeschooling, I think for me, I think for a lot of parents, that was the hardest part. I think the first lockdown, it was a little bit exciting. Like, oh, I don't know what's happening. This has never happened before. What's going on? We're all at home, all together. It's lovely. The second time it happened with homeschooling, I think we were all so over it. And of course it was winter, so we didn't have the lovely weather. So that's when I started, I created this character with these little hands to represent a kid. And that seemed to be really related as well and people were enjoying them and laughing and I think for me it was just the fact that I could make people smile when it was a really difficult time for a lot of people and it's just continued really and and it's just made me realize that people just really do like to laugh and like to laugh at really mundane boring things such as you know making your kids the same dinner and or dealing with your husband's crap like we've spoken about and just making videos out of the reality of life and making people smile. I don't know. It feels nice. It feels nice to know that I can raise a smile. It is nice. It's good that we can raise a smile. Because as you say, it's been such a it's been such a difficult time. And mm. funnily enough that you say that that second lockdown was the crippler. It was honestly, <laughs> that was the worst period. But you couldn't really get out because it was too cold. It was too wet. Mm. It was just typical British weather. And you couldn't really do much. And yet you're stuck in the house. And I also found as well that our school, I mean, they were great, but they were setting this work that necessarily, I mean, it was dull. Let's be honest. It was things mm. like sit and watch this YouTube tutorial that someone has created that was brilliant, but it's very 
very difficult for a child to get that same engagement from the screen that they maybe would from a lively teacher. And as much as these tutorials were great and somebody had gone to the effort of creating the content for kids and it was wonderful, my son would be like, are you shitting me? You want me to do it again? Obviously he didn't say, are you shitting me? But you can see his <laughs> eyes. But if he yeah. wasn't going to get his iPad banned from him, it would totally have been a shitting me situation. And he just was like, mom, I don't want to do that again. I want to go and do this. So they've kind of lost their sense of home in those hours where you were doing schoolwork even if they were only a few hours a day home kind of lost its its vibe didn't it it was more yeah. a place of arguing and you have to yes. sit down and do your work because mm. I have to do my stuff mm. please can we all just try to get along and it was mm. really difficult so to have something TikTok has become a place where I go and I laugh yeah and I notice that I sit and I just enjoy and I sit yes. for hours I said to a friend the other day do you get that thing that comes up that tells you you've been on here a bit too long and it's a woman walking around with a cup of like yes <laughs> you're the only other person that said yes everybody else is like no harry yes you should and i still that. scroll past i'm like oh yeah i know that i'll see you later and there's an ad on tiktok that says get off your phone yeah basically <laughs> there you go, oh, saying, please leave this app you've been on it for five hours it's a bit concerning and you're just like yeah. <laughs> I'm good, but you I can know get what's best for me. In it. I get in a proper like TikTok yeah. hole where I'm just scrolling and scrolling. And I, I don't understand why I do that more on TikTok than I do on Instagram. I don't understand why. Well, I always say that for me, a few days before we recorded this, Instagram had, it said it had a little hissy fit. And Instagram, yes. Facebook and WhatsApp all just disappeared and just went, no, yeah. not today. And I think for me, I was like, oh, this is lovely. No, nobody <sighs> can contact me. And I don't it have to do any work. Yes. The app that I was going to post, not tonight. Exactly. I felt, and it's wrong. I felt really liberated and yeah. happy. And I even said to one of my mates, I was like, maybe, I, maybe I'm in the wrong industry because yeah. I really enjoyed just yeah. not and actually WhatsApp without us realizing it is so consuming oh since goodness. we've been talking the amount of WhatsApp messages that have come up oh yeah I'm just like and it's constant and when WhatsApp was down it was like there's no messages coming up if someone yeah. really wants to get in touch with me they can either call me mm-hmm. or do old school SMS and I loved it WhatsApp, without realising it, is as consuming as Instagram, as TikTok, as the rest of them. And we don't realise it. It's funny that you say that because I never really thought of WhatsApp as something that was really consuming. But when it went down, I was like, Mm. absolutely. It's not so much my friends because one of my mates sent me a text message and was like, babe, can you do anything on Instagram? Because I tried to message you and I can't. And I'm like, no, hun, I cannot. Um, Because your friends can still get in touch with you that way. It was more my work groups. And then the kids' school groups and their oh activities, my God. are they necessary? Because I vote no. It's too much. It's, it's feral. too much. A lot of it is unnecessary. And they keep popping up. And they pop up. And it's... Yeah. <laughs> you know maybe that's a TikTok idea for the WhatsApp groups because honestly well I did a video actually when Instagram went down I've recorded something for it when it came back up and I did mention the WhatsApp and the mum groups and stuff so I did it like a sports commentary on how the events I've seen um, your sports commentary ones and they really make me laugh because I'm so used to watching them now Adam my husband and Toby are obsessed with football and actually funny enough two of the most stressful WhatsApp groups are Toby's football groups because he's at two different clubs at two different levels And it'll just be like, ping, 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 ping. Where's this match? Where's that match? Could you send me the sizing guide for this? No. That, it really makes me laugh because he's so into his football. And I just Mm. saw it and was like, I've seen this far too many times. And you sound exactly (laughs) like the sports commentators, but always talking about family things. I just made me giggle. It did. I did see that one. Well, I've got to give my husband credit for that because he loves his football. And I was saying to him, you know, what are key words that people use in like sports interviews? and he was like oh you've got to use this and you've got to use that and I was like oh okay no I don't I don't watch all that commentary stuff about football or any sport but see I see he really helped with that you know what I was was thinking when our parents when we were at school they didn't have any social media you know what I mean like they just there were no messages about someone's lost their jumper if you see it please pick it up and give it like how did they cope it they just just like I don't know did they convene around the school gates and talk I don't know I I do ask my mum a lot I do ask her a lot like how she managed I mean she was a single mother with three under the age of six I'm literally how how did you do it and she's just like I don't know but she said I'll do it all over again and I think well that's nice we survived we don't 
need all these WhatsApp chats sometimes. We don't need them. No, we absolutely do not. I mean, if you have the opportunity to come out of a WhatsApp group, then come out of it. That would be the solid advice. If you've got the opportunity to ditch it and just be Mm. like, nope, no, thank you. That is the one to go for because they are. Or just mute them. Yes, mute them. them. If I go away anywhere, I mute everything for a solid two weeks. And I'm like, no. (laughs) And you'll just see the number, but the number doesn't come up on your main thing. So unless you actively seek it out, you don't see Mm. that number. And it can be in the hundreds within a day. Oh, God, yeah, easily, easily. It's crazy. How are that many people wanting to converse? (laughs) No, this is is too much, but it's still nice to kind of be in touch with everyone. But when Facebook went down, I don't know if you looked at TikTok, but all the content on TikTok about, it was just so funny. I just found it hilarious how everyone, everyone just jumps on to make this content. And I just find it all really creative. I find it funny. It is. TikTok, I think, is very creative. I think Instagram had always been, and I know they've become more TikTok-esque but they had always been very polished. There was an expectation of what it would be like. And there were a few people that would book the trend and, you know, their feeds wouldn't be perfect. Their feeds Mm. would be quite raw, quite real. But then you'd scroll and you'd have maybe 10 perfect, beautiful pictures that had maybe been done by photographers or by people who were really talented with what they were doing. But it all kind of fitted into that perfect, pretty picture. And then it introduced video content and then videographers were creating this really perfect, beautiful, beautiful video content and I can't do either of those so I was always sort of a bit like "Mm." and then TikTok came along and it's for anybody and everybody of every skill level Instagram have picked that up well oh yeah they have they have I am grateful for that but I when I first joined Instagram I kind of wanted to have that perfect looking Instagram page. Everything looks lovely. Everything's the same filter and everything looks so lovely to look at. And I found that really quite difficult. I'm like, I'm not actually that person. I did try and I'm not that person. And then I think I really found my niche when I did join TikTok. Something was just like, oh, this is why I'm on social media because actually I don't take myself that seriously. And even though I've been, you know, put on this pedestal, it's like, oh, you're a model. I mean, you can see me right now. I look horrendous and I don't care. Um, (laughs) No, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not precious. I don't. You're real. I guess I, I feel more comfortable just being me rather than yeah. trying to portray this. I'm a model person because I'm, you know, whatever. I'm just a normal, real person. And I think I'm that's something normal. that's lovely about TikTok is that everybody can be their normal, realistic self. And it's all very different, but everybody mm. has found their own little niche. And I think lockdown has helped with that kind of thing where more people have been online who perhaps would otherwise have said absolutely not. I'm not going to bother with that. That's not for me. Mm. And they found that it is for them because there are other people out there who also were like, it's not for me and got mm. onto it. And everybody has their own little tribes where yeah. they really relate to other people. And when we were forced into a situation where we didn't have that day-to-day social, where we didn't have other people that we could connect to in real life, we managed to connect with them online. And mm. I think for parents, that will be invaluable because as you say, you kind of lose that social side sometimes, I think when you're a mum, especially when you have a new baby. I had the same as you where we were one of the first couples to have kids and we started quite young and I think a lot of my friends and Adam's friends were just a bit like okay well the things we're gonna do you're not necessarily available for so then slowly Mm. the invites stopped coming as often and you do really notice it so hopefully social media has allowed people to connect outside of needing to physically be there because that was really hard that was a really difficult pill to swallow when friends started to migrate away from us oh 100 again you feel like you're damaged goods or you're diseased or something it's like you didn't invite me to your dinner party because i've got a baby or you don't want to come round then, you know, how good of a friend were they in the first place, you know? That's true. I think that in itself as well is quite a difficult thing to realise. You suddenly start to think, well, the people that are there for you might not necessarily have been the ones that you expected to be there for you still. And the ones who, as you say, come back after they have kids themselves and start thinking, oh, well, this is what it's like. I didn't really realise. But it is a really weird time. I think parenthood can be so all-consuming and it just, it takes over everything, be it your WhatsApp group, be it your friend ships or just be it you it's mm. very easy to get lost in it oh god it's so easy to get lost in it and there's so much information out there as well like if you google something oh well, my kid's got a rash and you google it and you're just like why did I do that and <laughs> it's overwhelming information sometimes you're like I shouldn't have done that because now I'm even worried before and yeah it's just it's never ending I'm constantly thinking about the kids what they're going to be 
eat for dinner? Have I done their laundry? Have I done their homework? You know, is their karate outfit washed? Where's their next swimming lesson, football? It's consuming. There's loads. I don't think my husband thinks like this. No, I don't think mine does because mine will be like, oh, they have a dinner appointment. The school have asked what time. Why is it not in your diary? (laughs) Exactly. Well, I know that my husband, I call him last minute Larry because he does leave lots of things to the last minute. But the thing is, he is so chilled and just like, yeah. And I'm like, I actually wish I could be like that. Yeah. I'm so organized, or I try to be, that it's almost, it's almost like I, I feel like I'm taking on too much anxiety or yeah. something. And actually, like he'll go and pick up the kids from school at the last second. Whereas I'm there at the school gates like 10 minutes before with my snacks in my bag and everything ready. <laughs> it's just like, oh yeah, I don't have a zero you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, Sorry, I didn't respect that. that. I kind of wish I could be like that. Funnily enough, I'm neither of you because <laughs> I am a mixture of the wanting to be organized and to be prepared, but also very bad at timekeeping. So I will be the one who is like stressed as hell because I'm trying to be organized. I'm trying to do this, but then also with a tinge of lateness. So I I will charge about like a lunatic. Are you never late? Babe, I was on this call 10 minutes before it started. (laughs) You really were. I I got an email. I was here before you were. I and I was like, oh, did you get an email? (laughs) did it to try and test out my mic and my headphones because I'm that organized I got an email and I was like shit she's on right okay Plug my mic. oh I didn't realize <laughs> oh my god okay I need to not do that then because I'm always on early before any meeting I do the what I've done today I'm like yeah, kick on I need everything I didn't know you got an email I love that level of thorough checking though because I'm the person that will come on the call and then be like nothing works I'm really sorry but that's my point I'm so kind of like ahead of myself to a yeah. point where I stress myself out too much and actually I could have just come on the call at the actual time we were supposed to have the call and just be like hang on a minute let me get my mic don't know where it is um (laughs) I'm just too organized I want to be organized people get this impression of me as well sometimes they're like oh you're really organized with your kids I'm like I don't You've got that impression. <laughs> I don't know who told you that. And even my kids are looking at them like, no, she's not. <laughs> she screams at us to get organized, but she is not. Oh, yeah, I still do that. I try. Oh, well, that's a lie. No, I was going to say I try not to raise my voice, but no, I don't. Not anymore. <laughs> Yeah. I used to try not to raise my voice. I used to try to be calm and be like, I'm going to explain this to you. And then I was outnumbered mm. and none of them listened. And my 10 year old's got this tween attitude at the minute. And I'm just oh. like, dude, that's wholly unnecessary. It's like he suddenly discovered that if I ask him to do something, he can say no. And there is very little that I can do about it. It's like so little. Realized. So I, little. And you can I totally see agree. Like that. It's like, what are you going to do? I totally agree. I still use like the counting technique, like I'm going to count to three. I can still use that with my six-year-old, but I do it to my nine-year-old. And he does, you can see that it's almost like he knows, well, what are you going to do? He's too big now for me to like pick him up and plonk him and somewhere else and, you know, kind of like, well, you stay there. He's too big for that. The only thing that I can do is just take away what he loves, which is yeah. YouTube, computer, like basically Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, I'm going to have to take away Wi-Fi. But then it messes me up because then I need it. We have the iPad. I'm like, right, five, four. And you can see him looking at me like, five, yeah. four. Yeah. What you I do? did a video on that as well. Yeah. I did a video on that. I remember but, this one. And right, I got it's... to three and then I will say three, iPad ban in two. And then everything Oh, that's moving. clever. Oh, that's clever. All right, so you say the threat in the game. That's good. I will reiterate it. I'll be like noting it down and be like five. And you can see the look of whatever. Three iPad ban, shit. And you can just see it like twitch through their mind. But it has to be something. I think with my 10-year-old, he started to realize that even if I do take the iPad off him, then he's probably going to get it back at some point with good behavior. He's got to that point where if he feels that something is really unjust, that's when he seems to be at his element. You know, the hands will be flailing, the arms will be coming up, and there's the, the big, what?! What? Why? This is very (laughs) dramatic. All I asked you to do was brush your mean teeth. (laughs) Oh, it's so dramatic. It's like Kevin from that Harry Enfield sketch. Like, oh, just like, oh God, you're not even teenagers yet for crying out loud. Like, give me a break. But at 10, and like, he's nearly the same height as me. So as you say, I can't really, (laughs) I can't really pick up. No. 
No, I know. And he'll come up to me and he'll like hug me and we're, we're not that far off oh. my level. And I'm like, oh, oh that's me. cute. That is quite cute. It is sweet. It's the peril of, of being married to somebody who's six foot one whilst you're five five. He's provided <laughs> larger children and I'm here like. <laughs> that's lovely though. That is lovely. I don't think my son will be as tall as me till God knows I'm pretty tall. How tall are you? Uh, 5'10". Okay, so yeah. This might be a while. You know, it'd be lovely though when they can like just yeah. You know, take you in and I'll cuddle you apart from when you're trying to tell them off exactly that's when it's bad <laughs> yeah, you that's when you the... here. I'm getting to a point where I'm gonna have to stand on a step <laughs> Oh, <laughs> at him. Otherwise, he'll just laugh at me. Gosh, and then, how yeah. can I ban the iPad if he lifts his arm up and I can't reach it? <laughs> Turn the Wi-Fi off. Change the password. I think that's the way forward, really. What do you find harder, toddlers or tweenies? Yeah, toddlers. I mean, she's at nursery right now, only because it's just how they are just into everything. Yeah, they touch everything. They open everything. They want to destroy everything. If she was here, she would be on me and probably yeah. bashing the key keyboard and screaming and you know you can't have a conversation you can't really do anything with a toddler you can't have any peace yourself and it's wonderful it's lovely that you know my two-year-old is very much into everything and when we're here during the day she's into everything and at the same time she wants to think that she's the boss and if she doesn't get her own way she has tantrums and you know so there is that kind of like stressful part of it whereas obviously with my eldest who you know he does have his attitude and you know answering back at least I can have some time to myself yeah mumble or curse under my breath without him realizing and and I can reason with him you know end of the day you can sit them down and just reason with them and explain things and hug them and bribe them yeah. whereas with a toddler you can't really do that if they don't get something and they scream and then you're like oh for fuck's sake like, <laughs> And also when you're out in public, you know, in the shops or anywhere and they have a meltdown, you know, it can be, it's really stressful and it can be really irritating. You're just like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, it's really irritating. And then you get like people doing the side eye looking at you and you're like, oh, piss off. Yes, I'm not doing it on purpose. Like my kid is being a dick. I can't do anything right now. They are very unreasonable and you're making it harder for me. I remember coming back from, I think we'd been to Birmingham and Edith was just, I don't think she was feeling very well. I think she was brewing something because a couple of days later she was poorly. They can't communicate when they're that age. Mm. And she was just having the biggest meltdown on the Mm. train and nothing I could do would calm her down. And you could hear Uh people I can't bear it when people do that you'll get people that will sort of make like a little passive aggressive comment of, oh dear did mummy put the toy you wanted back oh that wasn't nice oh, well I would bear. never have been allowed to behave like this and you're like well, oh it's awful. allowing her it's kind of out of my control Sharon yeah <laughs> Totally. But I get the same from, you know, going back to my mother-in-law, she'll make a few comments. And that's when my husband's like, well, mum, you did the same with us. So what are you talking about? And I'm like, thank you. Yes. I'm like, I knew it. I think people forget. I think my mum has forgotten certain parenting things that she's done because I'll do something to my kids. She's like, Louise, you can't do that. I'm like, well, you did it. Yeah. She's like, did I? Oh dear. I didn't realize I did that. And yes, it's the whole eye rolling. And I remember taking one of my kids, my eldest, he was really young, like three months old, took him to a swimming lesson. Which looking back, I don't even know what why I bothered doing it. It was so much stress for me. He can't remember anything. He didn't benefit from it. It was so, so stressful. And he was screaming in the changing room and he couldn't sit up. So I laid him down and he's screaming and screaming and I'm wet trying to get dressed and trying to cover myself up. And there were loads of other mothers with small babies in the changing room. And I was seriously struggling and not one of them was like, can I help? Not one of them. And then when they were leaving the room, leaving the changing room, one woman was like, God, can't she just control her baby? I literally saw red and all I wanted to do was find her bag and stuff my son's pooey nappy in it but I didn't um, because I, I didn't know which clarify. one her bag was but I did think about it uh, but I didn't but I just thought no no I don't like this and that really scarred me in a way so whenever I see a mother struggling in public and you can sense that they're like fuck I don't like this yeah. I feel like everyone's watching me I'm getting that sweat like the sweaty upper yeah. lip and ah yeah. I will always make a point of saying either do you want help or don't worry about it we've been there it's fine don't worry about it and yeah, I yeah, always I do that, that as well and I do it mm. for the exact same reason that you've said because it feels so naff mm. I always try and catch your eye and smile mm. as if to say been there 
I was sat on the train last week and a family sat down with me and they had a little girl who was three and a slightly older boy. And the little girl was so loud. You know what kids are like at that age. She was really noisy. It was a commuter train back from London up to York. So, you know, it's always full of rumpy old businessmen. And I just Mm. sat down and they were like, I'm really sorry for the noise. I was like, dude, I have three kids. Yeah, exactly. Three and under at one point. Like she will not bother me in the slightest. She's fine. And we spent half the time with her chatting to me while she was on her mum's lap wriggling around and they were just absolutely fine so I think sometimes just having that reassurance that a the person remembers what it was like or has gone through it or is going through it and b Mm. that they're not judging you for it because they know that that's Mm. just kids kids can be absolute pain it is yeah absolutely there was one lady and this happened this morning I was walking the kids to school and there was this elderly lady walking towards me and it's a really you know school run kids everywhere parents everywhere it's really packed and there's two sides of the pavement if you're not on the school run go on the other side of the pavement because you're going to get in the way anyway this lady was walking towards us and uh, I was talking to the boys so I was like looking down talking to them so I wasn't really looking ahead and as I looked up this lady was in front of me and she kind of like and rolled her eyes as if to say how dare you be in my way and I was a bit like well if you can see me and it's the school run get out the way like go on the other side of the street now I just thought or have you forgotten or did you not have like have you forgotten what it's like And I do get it a lot from men as well. If I've got the pram and it's a really, really narrow pavement and I've got the pram and you've got the buggy board and you've got your shopping and it's all consuming and the man will walk around you, like go onto the road to walk past you. And you're so consuming everything. Sometimes you forget or you don't see them. And then they're like, yeah, you're welcome. And I'm like, sorry, I didn't see you. And for fuck's sake, shut up. I'm busy looking after my kids doing this. And like, is it really that much of an inconvenience? Yeah. Yeah. Have to walk around me. Would they do the same to someone else who had something else that was wider? Do you know what I mean? And I kind of feel like they might not have children, so they yeah. don't understand. You know, you're not a woman down the street with a pram going, hmm, well, you can move out the way for me. Yeah. You're more like, oh my God, have I done this? Have I done that? Yeah. Is my kid okay? Why are they crying? Do they just drop their Lego on the floor? They've just tripped over something. Oh my God, my phone's ringing. And it's so consuming that you don't mm-hmm. necessarily see. And of course, I appreciate them getting out of the way. Don't get me wrong, but don't then turn around and be like, oh yeah, you're welcome. Like, yeah. Piss off. I've got enough on my plate. Don't make me feel guilty. Yes. For trying to get my kids in one piece without me having to go on the road. Absolutely. Oh, is it too early for wine? (laughs) It is is not. We can do it. It's afternoon. We can. We can go for it. Right. One thing that I ask absolutely everybody is if you had to give one mum hack or mum tip to somebody, what would it be? And it honestly, we've had absolutely everything from snacks after school to certain things that you put in your drawers to divide laundry, literally everything and anything in between. If there's one thing that you can think of that makes your life easier as a parent, what would it be? Okay, as a parent, having children at school, school shoes for me are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's a bit of a stress in the morning not knowing where they are and there's PE shoes and there's football shoes. So they all have their own bar- basket at the front door which is just full of their own shoes and I know that sounds really simple but we didn't have it before and all the shoes were everywhere and then obviously the toddler picks them up runs away with them hides them so there were some stressful mornings of like I have no idea where your PE shoes are or your football shoes so I just have baskets full of shoes and they all have their own basket they're all in charge of their own basket and they just get their shoes on and off by themselves and it has taken so much stress out of that part of parenting you know you're trying to get the kids out of the door for the school run get your shoes on get your shoes on get your shoes on now I'm like right are your shoes in your basket let's go and have a look yeah. they're like yeah mummy they are look I'm like great <laughs> can you put-? and then they do it and it works for them I love that because Toby will come in he does football on Monday Tuesday Friday Saturday Sunday and every time he comes back from football, he will just randomly, because it's quite late in the evening, just randomly leave his football boots and then yeah. I'll trip over them in the morning. Yes. Or he won't be able to find them. Or he'll come in in a rush because he knows that he's got to get ready for football and he'll take his school shoes off and just leave them. And then he's mm. like in the morning running around like a lunatic going, I can't find anything. And he's a very dramatic child as it is, is Toby. <laughs> so that actually would be so much more useful than Mm. just trying to find Mm. all the different shoes and they have so many shoes for school so many shoes so many shoes (laughs) 
<laughs> and shoes. when you've got three kids and then my husband just leaves his shoes in the hallway as well I'm just like just I'm sick of seeing shoes but now I don't see any of them and it's lovely now they're in the basket I love that well Louise thank you so much for coming on the podcast. oh it's been a pleasure it's thank been you. lovely to have a chat with you thank you ever so much can you let people know exactly where to find you on what platforms and that kind of thing you can find me on Instagram and TikTok it's the same handle it's mama still got it but it is just M-A-M-A still got it with an underscore but yeah I mean you could probably find me from my Harriet's page anyway it's been an absolute pleasure I've loved it can we get a selfie absolutely let's do it <laughs> I love this I love that I've never done a zoom selfie before